not a gaming computer. It is a professional rendering workstation. Now what makes it such? Is it the processor? No, you get hype on processors in a lot of machines these days. Is it the RAM? No, you get a lot of RAM. If you have enough money, you can have more RAM. That's not an issue. What makes it different is the NVIDIA Quadro FX 4800 that's sitting right here. That is a graphics card dedicated not for gaming, but for rendering. It is part of NVIDIA's Quadro lineup, a lineup which is designed exclusively for workstations like this. Now, what exactly is a 3D rendering graphics card? What makes it special from the uh, cards that the gaming cards like the 7950s, the 760s? What makes it different from these cards that we all know? And why should you need one? Let's have a look. A graphics card is very much like a computer. It has a motherboard, a processor unit and lots of RAM. Now inside that processor unit are thousands of tiny processor cores working on displaying stuff. It might be lighting, it might be shadows, like in Crisis 3. Now this is what a gaming card does. Enter NVIDIA's Quadro. A Quadro is a workstation card dedicated to 3D modeling rather than gaming. So instead of showing you lighting, it handles all the mathematically intensive tasks involved in rendering and in making a 3D model. It's specialized towards that particular purpose and that's what makes it a workstation graphics card. NVIDIA is not the only player in the game here. AMD has their own lineup called FirePro. Now while a lot of people, especially in Sri Lanka, are familiar with NVIDIA's CUDA technology, not a lot are familiar with OpenCL, which is what AMD's FirePro cards specialize at. While both of these cards, these Quadros and FirePros, are geared towards 3D rendering, they are really, really good at two different things. NVIDIA's cards work very well with NVIDIA's proprietary CUDA framework. An application that uses this close proprietary CUDA framework to accelerate its workflow will benefit greatly from having an NVIDIA Quadro card plugged in, while AMD does something similar with their OpenCL framework. So an application that uses OpenCL to speed up whatever it does will massively benefit from having an AMD FirePro graphics card in there. Now what we have here today is the AMD FirePro V3900. For 26,000 rupees it is literally the cheapest 3D rendering graphics card you can get in Sri Lanka. It's this. So this is what you're paying 26,000 for. Now what do you get for your 26,000? Well for a start, if you are doing 3D rendering, you get performance better than any 50,000 rupee gaming graphics card. If you're pitting this against, let's say, a GeForce GTX 660, this will perform far better at that particular task. It won't be as good as that for gaming. So there are two distinct lineups here. There's the GeForce and the Radeon HD series for gaming. And then there is the FirePro and the Quadro series, which is for 3D rendering. Now, both of these cards can do the other's job in a pinch, but they are not effective at it. This will not pay, play games properly, and those will not render as uh, fast as you like. So, this is AMD's lowest end card in Sri Lanka. Let's move up the tier a bit. Then you have cards like the NVIDIA Quadro K2000. This is an 85,000 rupee graphics card and it is an exponential upgrade from this. Competing with this, you have cards like the AMD W5000. So these cards are basically doing the same job. They're competing with your attention. They're competing for your attention. Which one would you pick? It's simple. It depends entirely on what application you're using. AMD uses a framework called OpenCL and an application that can use OpenCL to accelerate its workflow would benefit from an AMD FirePro graphics card like this one. Who NVIDIA however has a proprietary framework called CUDA. Now this is not the open framework that AMD is using, it's different but applications that basically can leverage CUDA to enhance their performance will benefit from an a NVIDIA card more than they would from an AMD. Now the difference here is the framework itself, NVIDIA's CUDA framework is a bit expensive. 
because they, they charge developers for it. And uh, AMD's Fire, Fire Pro uses OpenCL, which is an open framework. So if you take cards at, the, at similar levels of performance, the V3900 competes with the Quadro K600, but the K600 is 35,000. There's a gap of 9,000 rupees. And that gap is because you're basically paying for the option to use CUDA. As simple as that. Now, where would you get a card like this? A lot of vendors in Sri Lanka have no idea what 3D rendering cards are, let alone their product names. There are a lot of shops where when you go and ask for a 3D rendering workstation, you'll end up with something that's better at playing Crisis 3 than actually churning out that 3D model. So the only, there are only very few vendors in Sri Lanka who sell these products. Quadros are more common than AMDs. Uh, you'll find Quadros in certain shops like Redline Technologies. You'll find them in ASCOM at Unity Plaza. But again, you have to be, you have to know your requirement. You have to know what programs you're using. You have to know if they support CUDA or not. AMD Fire Pro cards are extremely rare. They're only found at one place, and that's Redline Technologies at Majestic City. Now, these cards will cost you a bit if you're going for the higher professional tiers they will cost you an arm and a leg but it's worth it and whether you should buy a high-end model or a low-end model depends on what ki what kind of 3d work you're doing if you are a hobbies developer if you are creating 3d models for fun then you should not need to look any further than things like this but if you are for example a professional 3D modeler who expects to make a lot of money off his work, you might consider shelling out roughly 85,000 bucks for a Quadro 2000. And if by any chance you handle a lot of 3D work, if you are into creating 3D animated movies and such, then it's time to look higher up the tier. Again, it depends on what, how much you can afford and what purpose you're going to put the card to. And lastly, but most importantly, whether or not your programs can use these cards. If it's CUDA, remember, go for NVIDIA. If it's not CUDA, if it's OpenCL, go for the Radeon Firebrows. Those are your two options. And that is the end of this episode. We'll see you next week with a new one. Thank you.